Millions of white Americans belonged to the Klan. And they weren't even embarrassed by it. They were proud of it. And that hate became embedded systematically and systemically in our laws and our culture. Critical race theory. It's an approach to teaching of American history and civics that argues systemic racism is woven into American law and institutions. It's a theoretical framework that was developed in the 1980s by legal scholars to help us understand um, how it is that structural and racial disparities endure in our society and how that is actually engendered in some of our laws and policies. People think about racism as individual acts of bias or bigotry, but really um, CRT helps us understand the ways that racism is a system. Indeed, prior to the emergence of critical race theory, most people in the legal academy in the U.S. had embraced the idea that notions of fairness, equality, and justice guided the law. The intellectual forefather of critical race theory, Professor Derek Bell, was one of the first to challenge this view. Professor Bell was the first uh, black tenured professor at Harvard Law School. He devoted his scholarship and his life to exploring how it came to be that black people remained at the bottom of practically every measure of social well being, even though the civil rights movement had happened. And there were a whole bunch of laws on the books that ostensibly were designed to end Black people's subordination. Slavery has influenced our society in so many ways, but we've really invisibilized that. Our obsession with guns, we are, we are, um, we have more guns than almost any society um, in the world. And we have the highest rates of gun violence. And that is also a legacy of slavery, that the Second Amendment, while we like to think of it uh, as being um, allowing citizens to form militias to ward off government tyranny, it also was allowing them to form militias to suppress slave rebellion. Every single form that we that we have for gov the government, we have to choose a race, including our birth certificate, our marriage certificate, our death certificate, that that is also a legacy of 1619. The first essential tenet of CRT is that CRT believes that race is not a biological entity, but rather is a social construction. That racism is a normal feature of American life and society. Racism makes all the sense in the world. It helps to protect wealth. It helps to uh, protect privilege. It helps to protect power. Finally, CRT argues that while racism may be perpetrated by bad actors, and more frequently is the result of institutional structural processes, the mechanisms that do most of the work of maintaining white people as the dominant racial group in this country at present. All that we're seeing, Charlottesville, the insurrection on the Capitol, George Floyd, um, the Rittenhouse trial, which of course goes to a long legacy of white people who fight for black lives will receive the same poor justice that black people receive. Critical race theory essentially argues that racism is baked into all the systems of American society and that any sort of neutral system is in fact a guise for racial power. Things like capitalism or things like the meritocracy, these things are actually just guises for power. And so what that boils down to in sort of practical terms is all disparity equals discrimination. If you can see any stat where black people are underperforming white people, this means the system was set up for the benefit of white people and that white people have a duty to tear down these systems in order to alleviate the racism that's implicit in those systems. When it comes to schools, what this tends to boil down to is kids who are white have experienced privilege because the system was built for white people and we have to change well, the standards. Right. Now, mm -hmm. Okay, well, so Malcolm, you tell me your definition. Oh, I agree with everything he just said. If you are a certain race, you're oppressed. Even if you're not in your own life oppressed, you're oppressed because you're that race. If you're another race, you're an oppressor. Regardless, you might be the most righteous human being on the face of It doesn't matter because you're white. And that's how this works. So instead of the proletariat and the bourgeoisie, as Marx set it up, you have the oppressed and the oppressor, white versus all minorities. This is the Americanization of Marxism, and it is pernicious. I talk about this in my book, An Inconvenient Minority, but critical race theory asserts that the world in America is divided into a racial caste system, whites on the top, blacks on the bottom, but they have no idea 
what to do with Asian Americans because Asian Americans are a minority. You know, they have been discriminated against in this country and yet sure. they succeed and they achieve. It is sad that we are even contemplating something like critical race theory where children will be separated by their skin color and deemed permanently oppressors or oppressed in 2021. That is not teaching the truth unless you believe that whites are better than black. How do I have two medical degrees if I'm sitting here oppressed? How do I get, first of all, time up, because I only got five minutes now, five minutes. Two medical degrees, no mom, no dad in the house, worked my way through college, sat there and hustled my butt off to get through college. You gonna tell me somebody that looked like all y'all white folks kept me from doing that? Are you serious? What was the reaction to you of people who support critical race theory? I'll give you an example. That's what it was. They had nothing to say because pretty much the lifestyle that I came from, I was a very type of person that they were talking about that was down and suppressed and oppressed and you no know, disproportionate. And for me to be able to come out of that, to work my way through school, to get where I am, I just called BS on it. It's nonsense. I can't believe That's why I said I can't believe that we're even talking about this because it is a complete lie. Not one white person or system in place kept me from doing what I did. Pick out your favorite magic wand, wave it over America, remove every smidgen of racism from the hearts of white people. Now everybody white thinks exactly like Mother Teresa. Do we still have a situation where 70% of black kids enter the world without a father married to the mother, an increase from 25% back in 1965? Do we still have a 50% dropout rate in many of our urban high schools, and many of the kids who do graduate cannot read, write, and compute at grade level? Are 25% of young black boys in some urban areas still having criminal records? By that I mean in jail, on parole, or on probation? Is the number one cause of preventable death for young white men accidents like car accidents or drowning versus the number one cause of preventable death for young black men, homicide almost always at the hands of another young black man? Is the rate at which young black men are killed eight times the rate at which young whites are killed? If the answer to those questions are yes, then I submit to you that systemic racism is not the problem and critical race theory and reparations are not the answer. Critical race theory is critical racism. How we treat people is based on who yeah. they are and not and what color nice. they are. And if they're nice and smart. See, this is, how, this is how children think right here. Critical race theory wants to end that. Not with my children. It's not going to happen. But we need to stop CRT. Period. Point blank. Children do not see skin color, man. They love everybody. We are should be moving toward a colorblind society where we don't see race. That's the old way to look at it. I think that's still the good way to look at it. Critical race theory is a racist theory. And I want to destroy this myth right now. People of all colors, including myself, oppose critical race theory because it's based on a lie. This country was founded on liberty and freedom and the idea that people are should be looked at by skin color is insulting to everything that what America stands for. Equality is the idea that was first proclaimed in the Declaration of Independence, consecrated in blood during the Civil War, and codified into law with the 14th and 15th Amendments and the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act of the mid-1960s. But the critical race theorists explicitly reject this vision, arguing that equality under the law is camouflage for white supremacy, patriarchy, and naked racial oppression. In their academic work, they've directly attacked the principles of non-discrimination, colorblindness, individual rights, private property, school integration, freedom of speech, and meritocracy. The critical race theorists would replace the system of equality with a system of equity, which represent diametrically opposed philosophies. Whereas equality seeks to protect individual rights regardless of race, equity seeks to divide the world into competing racial groups and ensure race-based equality of outcomes, endorsing active racial discrimination to get there. Critical race theory has been embraced by the Democrat Party, by the media, by Joe Biden, who has enshrined it with executive orders. There's propaganda, brainwashing going on in our schools today, pushing critical race theory. And if we don't put an end to this, we are going to destroy this society. Them. They have tried to put critical race theory in every aspect of government, in the State Department, in the, uh, the military, and definitely in education. The leaders of this movement think our society is defined by white supremacy. They think our leaders are complicit at best. They think that all Americans are either oppressors or oppressed. 
They pit whiteness and blackness against each other in a manner that reduces every American, no matter their character or their creed, to their racial identity alone. One of these critics, Dr. Ibram Kendi, wrote this, the only remedy to past discrimination is present discrimination. The only remedy to present discrimination is future discrimination. That's right, that's what he said. Think about that for a moment. He's saying that he's opposed to equality under the law. He's opposing our merit-based system for federal employment. Dr. Kendi and his followers are in no uncertain terms advocating for state-sanctioned racism in the United States of America. New York's eligibility plan for distributing its limited supply of COVID treatments now includes taking a patient's race into account, with a memo from the state's health department explaining it this way. This is a quote. Non-white race or Hispanic slash Latino ethnicity should be considered a risk factor as long-standing systemic health and social inequities have contributed to an increased risk of severe illness and death from COVID-19, end quote. Critics are going after that policy, calling it racist. It's unconstitutional and it's racist. Um, but this is, quite frankly, this is critical race theory. This is, this is literally critical race theory applied to public health. This is basically saying that since there's past discrimination against Af African Americans mm. and other, other minorities, there should be present discrimination against white people for, get, uh, for getting vaccines. The land reform provision in the Democrats' most recent coronavirus relief bill, it allocated billions to so-called farmers of color. At the same time, that bill denies money to farmers who have the wrong skin color. That is, by definition, racism. It's clearly illegal under the law, under the Civil Rights Act. Now, several farmers are suing over it as they should, but MSNBC doesn't like that. MSNBC just ran a segment accusing those farmers of being white supremacists. And really, you know, his group, America First Legal, a, a more accurate name for it would be White Men First Legal, uh, because it really is about attacking any efforts to make society more equitable for marginalized communities. So have I got this right? You applied for this loan forgiveness program, but you were refused because you were white. Is that accurate? Uh, well, thanks for having me, Barney. But yeah, basically, uh, we, we are ineligible strictly because of our race. I, I'm incredulous. I, I just can't believe it. I, I can't understand the racial discrimination like this, just the flagrant racial discrimination by the government we haven't seen since the 60s. And, and just because it happens to be towards white people doesn't make it any better. Uh, I don't understand. I have a dream. My poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I think the right story here is that it's the American story. We're all in this thing together. I know that's very easy to say. I think Martin Luther King got it right in 1963. I think that the racialization of this discussion of crime and violence and policing, of poverty and wealth and whatnot, is bad for America. I think talk about reparations, whatever the moral argument might be, is disastrous for the future of this country. Black people should not be trying to cut a separate deal with America. Let's make the country a good country for everybody and we'll be on the right track.